All right, welcome into the Arrowhead Attic Podcast. Patrick Allen here with you as always. Got a very special guest today, Chiefs Hall of Famer, Tony Gonzalez. Tony, how you been, man? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing very well. I just had a, uh, my wife and I had a baby two months ago. We're uh, over the moon. We're a little tired, but we're hanging in. Congratulations, man. Who's who's changing diapers? You doing that? Oh, I'm doing as many of them as I can. She put in uh, She put in nine months of hard work, so I figure I've got four or five years to make up for it. Look at you. Good husband. <laughs> uh, well, listen, Tony, I know you're uh, you're working with Crown Royal. They're the official whiskey sponsor of the NFL with their kickoff with Crown uh, program. This program sounds really cool. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I partnered up with, with Crown Royal and uh, we're going to kick it off next week out there in Arrowhead uh, for that opening game. It's uh, they got an 18 wheeler um, that's going to be a tailgate on wheels. Basically, it's going to be going from from city throughout city to city throughout the year, spreading generosity. You know, the purple bag, the famous purple bag that the Crown Royal comes in, uh, they're going to be giving out those to the military. And so I'm big with the military. They're helping out the military. It's a great little partnership that we got going on here. And we're going to be doing it, doing it throughout the season. An 18-wheeler tailgating machine. There's no better place to start off a tailgating tour than Arrowhead Stadium. When you were when you were driving in, you know, for games at Arrowhead and smelling that barbecue, I mean, do you ever wish you could just kind of hop out and and and, and grab a grab a rib or something? All the time. I was shoot. Sometimes I did on the way in there, <laughs> especially if it was a night game or something. You know, it's cool because the fans are the best in Kansas City. Uh, but really, after the game, that's when you come out. I'm always like, hey, save me a plate. Nice. Nice. Absolutely. Um, well, listen, I want to ask you a little bit about your your career. Uh, and I had this question uh, I, I thought was kind of interesting. You know, you 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 didn't have the best quarterbacks all the time when you were in Kansas City, probably the best quarterback when you went to Atlanta, you played with Matt Ryan. Um, if there was one, one pass thrower um, that you could have played with, that you could have caught passes from in, in NFL history, who would it have been? Uh, well, there's – God, I'm, I'm going to say 1A and 1A. Cause I, cause I love them both. Uh, and I would say Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, yeah. uh, during my year, uh, obviously now it would be Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> uh, because you know, I always said this, if I would have played with, with Tom or with Peyton, I mean, you can add every year, you can add an extra 250 yards and you can add an extra three touchdowns, three, four touchdowns, uh, and, and probably add an extra 20, 25 catches. I mean, cause those, I remember being with those guys at the pro bowl, and it was like, wow, this is incredible. Nothing against the guys I played with, but it is what it is. They, they're not Hall of Famers. And, and these two guys are the greatest to ever do it. It would have been really, really nice to play with one of those two guys. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you've always kept yourself in incredible shape during your playing career and after your playing career. 48 now. I'm curious. If you had time to prepare to play in one more NFL game with a great quarterback, like, say, Patrick Mahomes, what stat line do you think you could put up? Oh, it's mad. But you know, I, I I work out religiously. I feel good. I was I was just thinking about this this morning. I I feel good. I, I think I look pretty good. I look almost as I'm almost the same weight as I was when I was playing. But I don't know about these the ligaments and the joints. Yeah. Uh, but those actually feel pretty good too. So I think if I went out there and trained, I think I could get uh, a good thirty five yards uh, using the red zone touchdown. Throw it up there. Let me go get it. Yeah. So if the, I mean, if the chiefs called you, if they made it back to the super bowl and they, they called you and said, Hey, Tony, we, we need a little bit of help out there. Uh, would you, would you consider it? Yeah, I would consider it. I would. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm going to get, I'm going to, I'm going to get Brett Veach on the phone next. Um, yeah, we'd love to see him. We'd love to see him for one more ride. Um, okay. So, you know, you played a lot of your career with Kansas city. Did you have a, a favorite or a most memorable moment playing with the chiefs? Oh man. So many, so many. I mean, Obviously, we never we never won a playoff game uh, while I was there. Uh, but uh, I remember when it really goes back to it's all about winning. And I think when people look back in their careers, that's what you want to enjoy the most. That was one of the reasons, you know, uh, unfortunately, I had to I had to get out of Kansas City because uh, I wanted to go get a chance to win. But I remember when I first got there in 1997, uh, we had a great team, 13 to three, Marcus Allen, Derek Thomas, Marty Schottenheimer, legendary coach. Uh, Andre Risen, uh, we were such a good football team. Uh, it's it's probably a bittersweet memory, but I remember playing in the playoffs. Uh, we lost to the Broncos, but that atmosphere was just incredible, and you knew we had such a good team. We ended up winning, but that's one of my favorite memories as a team. I think as an individual, is probably the day I broke 
uh, the touchdown record, broke Shannon Sharp's record. I think I had a, I needed uh, a touchdown to, uh, to tie the record. And, and then obviously if I get another one, I can break, uh, go over it. And I got them both in the same day. It was a season. It was in playing against Cincinnati. It was a beautiful day at Arrowhead. My whole family flew in for the game. Uh, we won the game more importantly. So it was, uh, that was, that was a big memory for me. It was an awesome moment. And I don't want to talk about that Denver game. I didn't go to, I was in junior high. I didn't go to school the next day. Um, that was rough. Um, so speaking of, of winning, the chiefs have done an incredible amount of winning, unfortunately, after, after your career with them, but, um, they're trying to do something this year that nobody's ever done. And that's when three straight Super Bowls. Do you think they can get it done? Yeah, I do. I do. I think right now, anybody who doesn't pick the chiefs, uh, as a preseason favorite, if they stay healthy and everything, all things being equal, they stay he- pretty, you know, pretty healthy. Uh, I, I think you're you're just being a contrarian. You're being like, oh, you just want you just want to go against the grain. They're the best team in the NFL right now. I mean, they, and they got better. They won the Super Bowl last year. They got better on offense. They brought in some weapons for Patrick to go out there and have an MVP year. I'm putting them up for the MVP already. Uh, I think they should go out there and show out this year and 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 win the whole thing. I, I don't. I, it last year will be harder than it will be for them this year. Now there's some good teams. That's not to take it away. It's going to be tough. Uh, yeah. But I think as long as you got number 15 under center, uh, anything can happen. I think they're going to play really well. It's going to be fascinating to see how it all takes place. Is there a team in the AFC that you think stands out as, as somebody who could take them down? There's a lot of good quarterbacks in the AFC. There's, there's a lot of good ones. I, I, I like, um, I like Baltimore. I like Baltimore a lot. I think uh, MVP from last year, Lamar Jackson. They got uh, old King Henry out there toting, toting the rock in the backfield. That's going to be big because now you got both those guys are dangerous, dangerous runners, and he can throw. He, he can hurt you down the field. Uh, Mark Andrews, the tight end, one of the best in the league. Uh, they got some players out there, and then they're always good on defense. So they're the, the one team. I think the Bengals maybe – uh, uh, and people a dark horse, maybe the Jets. I don't know. Depending if Aaron can get back and be where he's where he's been in the past, and they stay healthy. Uh, but I don't think the Bills. I think the Bills kind of take a step back. Miami, good team, great offense, but they, they can't they can't beat uh, I, they can't hang with Baltimore and uh and 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 Kansas City, in my opinion. Baltimore is tough, man. I wouldn't if I'm an opposing defense. I don't want to let that team get inside the five yard line with King Henry and Lamar Jackson. You might as well just let him score. And yeah, and, what do you do? What are you going to do? Take off. <laughs> um, okay, I, I wanted to ask you uh, about Marty Schottenheimer. You got to play for him for a, a couple of seasons, and he passed away. Um, you know, he was a semifinalist for the 2024 Hall of Fame class. But he didn't make it to the final cut to be a finalist. As a Hall of Famer yourself, is Marty worthy of induction? And what made him such a special coach? Absolutely. Everywhere he went, he had great success, great success. And he was doing it with, and, and, and this is not a slight to anybody. Uh, you gotta, you gotta have that quarterback. You, I mean, that, that, I mean, Andy Reed, when he came over to the chiefs was considered a, just a, a really good coach, you know, but he can never quite get over the hump or whatever. But as soon as you give him number 15, now he's, the, now he's going to be probably the greatest coach ever. He might pass Bill Belichick, or at least he's in that, he's in that conversation. And I think Marty, he takes good teams and makes them better. Whatever you, wherever you're at, he can make an average team really good. He can make a good team great. Uh, and if he would have had that quarterback, he would have won some of these Super Bowls as far as I'm concerned. You know, he had Joe Montana, but wasn't in his prime. Uh, but Marty, I loved him. Offense, defense, great communicator. Uh, hung out with the players' coach after the games. We would hang out with them. I, I loved Marty. I only had him two years. Uh, but after he left us, he went over to San Diego. And the way they go, 14-2. and two. Yep. Uh, but they, but he, so meaning that he always was going to put out a great team. The loved coach by players and fans, Tony, I know we got to get you out of here. Can you tell our listeners one more time where they can find you at, uh, at that NFL opener at Arrowhead stadium with crown Royal? I'll be pulling up with Rob Riggle on an 18 wheeler. Look for the crown Royal truck. And we're going to have some fun. Come on out there and help, help the generosity that crown Royal is spreading and, uh, and helping the military. So come on over and join me if you see me. Yeah, head on out to Arrowhead for that opener and support Tony, Crown Royal, and our troops. Tony, we appreciate you coming by. Good to see you, and best of luck this year. Always a pleasure, man. Thank you. Yeah. See you. Look for that baby. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to need it.